But hey, y'all, you already know who I am. And guess what? I've got another history project. Well, today is going to be on Thomas J Jonathan Jackson. Don't know the name. I didn't either until I had to Google it. It's Stonewall Jackson. Y'all know how this works by now, so let's go. On January 21st, 1824, in Clarksburg, West Virginia, although at that time it was just for Virginia since the Civil War hadn't happened yet and the states weren't divided in two, it doesn't matter. Fresh shot the bat, life gave him a pretty crappy hand, with both his father and sister dying from typhoid fever at the ripe, old, refined age of two. And then, a couple of years after that, his mom died too. So, Mr. Stonewall had to move in with his uncle at the ripe old age of seven. Now, life actually wasn't all that bad with his uncle. I'll be honest. He helped him out on the farm and he occasionally went to school, but not that often. So he just had to teach himself to read through borrowing books because of, you know, farmhand. Jackson's first job was actually as a cop at the distinguished age of 17. This naturally allowed him to enroll in into West Point for his college of choice. And for those who don't know, West Point is kind of like military Harvard. If you went there and graduated, you pretty much had a future inside the Army. Now, Stonewall graduated from, from West Point in 1846. And shortly after that, Mr. Stonewall Jackson helped fight in the, in the Mexican-American War, where he managed to rise up the ranks and become a major. For those who don't know how important the rank of major is, here's a chart. He also met one particular Robert E. Lee there for the very first time, and as it turns out, Mr. Wallace Stone over here would see Robert E. Lee soon again when he joined the Civil War in 1861, when it turns out that Lee was kind of his boss. Now, that has to be the reunion of a lifetime. Now, Jackson started out as a colonel and managed to rise up to become a brigadier general. Once again, for those who don't know, here's a graph of those who have no idea how military ranks work. And, and you know, Jackson actually got the name Stonewall for a very specific reason. Back in the Battle of Bull Run, everybody in the Confederate Army was on the back foot. Men were either dro dropping like flies or fleeing, li fleeing like cowards, except for Jackson. That day, he quote-unquote stood there like a stone wall. And everybody called him Stonewall Jackson because of his determination. Sadly, he died soon after the Battle of, of Chancellorsville due to friendly fire. He was shot, shot, in, sh shot in the arm, to be specific. And two days later, on May 10th, 1863, the stone wall crumbled, passing away and affecting everyone around him. Stonewall's legacy will always be remembered, with just a few examples being his battle tactics and still being taught in colleges today. They are still being taught today. That's huge. And the Stonewall Jackson State Park being created in West Virginia. And Jackson actually had a carving of himself made in a Georgia mountainside. And just for some fun facts that I found, he actually kept a horse that he was going to give to his wife. I admit that's really dumb, but it cracks me up because he liked that horse so much that he gave it a name, that being Little Sorrel. And he loved it so much that he just kept it and then bought his wife another horse, which then then led to, led to all of his peers teasing him about it. And he was actually a massive germaphobe too. Notice how I always gave him gloves? And one time, he actually lost his middle finger in battle. And no more than a day after the amputation surgery, he basically just woke up and went back to work despite being told to rest. And that is some amazing legendary stuff right there. Now, St Stonewall Jackson was, was an amazing man who, quite frankly, lived an amazing life. His death, while not serving his, his side's cause, it did cement him as a brilliant mind and a fascinating man. Thank you, and a good night.